Hello friends, welcome to Shauna Stitches. I'm Shauna and this is my crafty podcast where I talk about all the things that I've been working on lately. This is episode number 72 and it is April the 10th, 2023. And I think it's been five weeks since I last podcast, so needless to say, I have a lot to show you guys. Before I forget, you can find links to everything I talk about down below. If for some reason you don't find them there, please either leave me a comment or send me a message. You can contact and find me on Ravelry and Instagram under Shauna Stitches. Those are linked below as well. Let's see. Uh, it's been... Cody interruptions, of course. Cody, hey, lay down. It's been a very long five weeks since I last podcast. Life has been busy and uh, yeah, just not a lot of time for extra stuff. And unfortunately, the podcast falls under the brain of extra stuff. So we have time today. Let's get into it. The very first thing we're going to start with is finished objects. And I have a bunch. I'm going to try and go in the order of what I have finished. So in case you missed the last episode, I talked about sock madness. I had done the, what do you call it? The qualifying round. The very first round, which was the intarsia balloon socks. And, um, now I have already finished round three. So three pairs of socks since then. The first pair being the, these are very hard to show. It might be better if I take them off the sock blocker. They're called the Valgus socks. That's spelled V-A-L-G-U-S and it's by Jennifer Rajinsky. I'm sure I said that wrong, but it is down in the show notes. Um, so these are very interesting construction. I'm trying to remember. We started cuffed down. They're worked flat. And you work the entire thing, adding the heel. It's an afterthought heel. All the way to the toe. Do the toe. And then you seam up the open portion with what you see is my pink yarn there. And you start at the toe and seam your way all the way up. And it's not a straight seam. It uh, takes a little curve there to the top of the leg. These are amazing construction. Like uh, it was written very well in the pattern. It made sense but I have never knit a pair of socks flat and I definitely have never seamed anything up with such a visible seam like that. Depending on the color that people chose, a lot of people were saying this reminded them of um, Frankenstein, like the Frankenstein stitches. And other people were saying it reminded them of, oh gosh, what's that kid's book, uh, The Caterpillar? Is it The Hungry Caterpillar or something like that? It's uh, It has a green ca uh, caterpillar with like, there's definitely red on the cover. So the original socks were done in, I think, green and red. And this is what I had in stash, uh, green and pink. So very close to the original. And I really like them. They fit well. I This being my very first uh, Sock Madness sock in the actual rounds, um, when it first came out, I was under the impression that in that first round, everyone that finished within the two weeks would move on to the second round. And it wasn't until, I don't know, three or four days in that I realized I had missed something and it was the first, I think, 30 people. And my team had, maybe it was 35 people. My team started with 39 people. So I opted for the longer leg, which I definitely was regretting, not because I don't like long legs, I do, but I was worried about the time crunch. The way these have been coming out, uh, my work schedule goes, I work um, one week, I'll work five days, five twelves, so 60 plus hours. And the next week I work two twelves, so 24 plus hours. And each time these socks are coming out, they come out on a week where I'm working 60 plus hours. So that leaves me very little time to be working on these. And when time is a factor, it's scary. <laughs> I mean, it's just sock knitting, it shouldn't be, but... Dang, there's pressure. So as you can see, there's a left and a right. They um, are not identical. 
So these were a lot of fun. I'm very happy to have them finished. All right, what's next? Uh, the next pair I finished, and um, you'll have to excuse me, I have so many finished socks that my sock blockers have to do a wardrobe change. Maybe we'll just put one on. You'll get the idea. This is my Desert Vista Dye Works sock. I'm having a struggle with the focus. There we go. Desert Vista Dye Works socks for March. It is the Dry Bones colorway. And I picked this because you can see there is green in there. And I don't have a ton of green colored anything in my sash and definitely not in Desert Vista Dye Works. So this was the closest that I had. In case you were wondering, there are two. There we go. And those are finished. I've been knitting all of my Desert Vista Dye Works uh, in the same recipe, if you will. 20 rounds, two by two cuff, 70 rounds of leg with a 42 row uh, uh, slip stitch, heel flap and gusset, followed by a between, it's been between 85 and 95 rounds for the foot. Um, they're all the same length. I don't know if it's stitch gauge, a little bit of difference in the yarn. I really think sometimes that the dye affects how thick the yarn is. Anyway, for some reason, <laughs> they're different uh, lengths, but I use my sock ruler to figure out when I need to start the toe. And they are just a standard toe where you decrease every other round till I think I get down to 10 stitches. It's all in my project page notes, which are linked below to Ravelry pages. Also very happy to have these done. And next we have the second round of Sock Madness socks. These are the, again, there's a left and a right, so I'll try and show them individually um, and hide my face. Uh, so this is Celtic Rain by, where is it? Sorry, I'm looking, I'm looking at my notes over here. Celtic Rain by Cynthia Hootner, Houtner, not sure how you say that. <clears throat> so these have beads, not too many beads, but a few, and lots of traveling cables and twisted stitches. I think they are absolutely beautiful. Again, like I said, there's a left and a right, so, I probably should have brought my flat blockers to show you these because I think that they just show them off a little bit better. But this is what we're working with today. So let's see here. Let's try and show these off the best possible way. Ooh. Well, dropping them on the floor is not the best possible way. So let's see. I think that's showing the right and the left on the right side. It's kind of hard to tell. And without blockers, they don't look very good. I haven't washed or blocked these, um, but the blockers really do open them up. And what else to say about this? I don't think there was anything too uh, interesting about the heel flap that I remember. Of course, you know, when you keep doing these uh, difficult socks, it's kind of like once you're done with one, out of sight, out of mind, onto the next thing. At least that's how I feel. Okay, the next one, which also has a right and a left, so maybe we won't even bother with the sock blocker. It is Sock Madness Round 3, which is the Socks of Little Brain Socks. And I totally did not get that reference, but once you see the design and I explain it, it will make sense. So here is a sock. This would be, let's see. Oh, this is the left foot. Um, as you can see the, maybe you can see, the cable here at the bottom. Uh, so it's longer on the side that would point towards your big toe. And uh, there's this little pink portion and lots of beads. On the back, there is a balloon, more beads more honeycomb stitches, and a quite difficult heel, if I would say so myself. Maybe I'll put one on the blocker so you can kind of see what that looks like. Anyway, let me tell you the reference. The reference, if you didn't, um, 
my colors aren't right. If they were, you'd probably be screaming it. But this is Winnie the Pooh based. So this is Winnie the Pooh's little shirt and uh, the balloon. I don't know. Maybe it's from the movie. Maybe it's from the show. I'm not sure. But um, supposedly a balloon like takes him up towards a honeybee tree or something. Cody, what are you eating? Stop. Again. And then, of course, you have the little bees. I was so happy to have the right colors because if I would have just picked two random colors of beads, I never would have picked yellow and black. But I got a 24 color bead little package from Amazon. So that worked perfectly. And I picked the coral color here uh, because... I don't know, it was close-ish to yellow. I know it's not really, but uh, kind of in the same spirit. And then uh, the pink instead of red. So I had a red sparkle, I think it was Stroll, and I was gonna do the red for the shirt. It just didn't go very well. So I'm calling this if Winnie the Pooh had a sister. <laughs> this would be the colors. Uh, anyway, oh, I was gonna show you the one on the blocker. So take a look at this heel. It was, Cody, go lay down. This heel was quite the process. And I am not much of a chart, knitting chart person. I can follow them and whatnot. But if anyone knows, maybe you can explain to me, why is it when a chart is done in rows? Cody, go lay down, go lay down. In your bed, in your bed, bedtime, bedtime. It's not working. <laughs> anyway, why is it that on a chart that is done with rows, I think I have hair on my lips. Uh, you obviously knit from left to right, and then when you purl, it's the right to left. But when you're on the purl side, it will show a purl, but that means to knit. Why on earth, if you know you're supposed to work this way, why can't they just show it as a knit stitch? It's very confusing to this little brain um, to have to make that modification in my head. It's showing me a pearl. My brain wants to work a pearl, but then I have to remember it's really a knit on those wrong side rows. And when you have, I already put them down there, but when you have a pattern like that that has both knits and pearls, it's not just stockinette, it's not garter, that's really difficult. I managed it, but it was not easy. All right. That's that. I have one more finished object, also socks. And we have these. These are the DK Weight Vanilla Socks by Kay Litton, the crazy sock lady. They are my husband's size, which is a US men's 13 to 14. And I just love how they turned out. So yesterday, uh, Easter, for whatever reason, I was feeling the urge, A, to cast everything on, but B, to finish old things. So I was looking through my Ravelry projects that haven't been finished yet, and I realized these were on there, and I knew that there wasn't much to do, so I went and found them from where they were. They had been sitting in my workout room as, um, treadmill knitting, but I haven't been doing that a lot lately, so uh, they hadn't seen any love. Well, I cast these on July 31st of 2021, and when I picked them up yesterday, I already had one sock done, and the other sock was done to the end of the gusset here. And so I knit the entire foot and the toe yesterday, it was quite fast, and we had a finished pair of socks. So I held two different sock yarns together, this multi-brown and this brighter yellow, orange, and teal. And this is what it made. I really like how they turned out a lot. So now that I've shown them to you, my husband can wear them. Uh, I really, really wanted to cast on a pair for me or for someone else. And I was good. I haven't done it yet, but I'm still wanting to. I have so many whips on the needles though. It's I'd say it's a problem. It's not. I have enough needles, but uh, I'd still like to cast something else on. Okay, so those are all the finished objects. Now we're going to go into works in progress, but before we do that, I thought it'd be fun to do a little 
giveaway since it's been a long time since I podcast and since I've been wanting to do giveaways anyways. And uh, we're going to do a pattern on Ravelry or I guess another location if there's a way for me to gift it, but a $10 or less pattern. And what you have to do is take a look at this picture that I'm going to insert right now. And it's a picture of my washing machine with a bunch of hand knit socks in there. And I counted them all. I counted them twice just to make sure. Tell me how many socks do you think are in the washing machine? And I guess in, included in your number, if you'll put the word uh, washing machine, I guess that's two words, uh, at least washing. Um, that way I can kind of filter the comments a little easier. But uh the winner will either guess the correct number or be the closest number up to that number, but not going over. So kind of like price is right rules. Um, yeah. So tell me how many socks are in that washing machine. Sorry about that loud banging around. Okay. Now we will do works in progress. So what's first? The first socks I will show you are my April Desert Rista Dye Work socks. And I have them in this fun little container. I wasn't gonna buy this, but my husband convinced me to. We were at Joanne Fabrics the other day, and oh, I know I was looking for beads for my sock project because I thought the ones that I got from Amazon weren't going to work, but they did. And uh, my husband saw this, he's like, oh, it'd be so nice to keep your projects in. And then because it has the holes in the top, you can just feed the yarn out through there, either side. It's worked really well. I did use it for treadmill knitting and um, also just use it sitting in my chair. The fact that it has holes doesn't make it fantastic for dog hair, but it works okay. So, as I said, these are the April Desert Vista Dye Work socks. And my color is called Opals. So uh, I just looked at my stash and thought, you know, what color kind of seems April-ish to me. And my original thought was that, um, you know, they say April showers bring May flowers. So I was thinking the blue is kind of like April showers. And my husband asked me if it was Easter egg colors. So um, while it's not intended to be, I feel like it works pretty well for Easter egg colors. I am very close to done with the second sock. Can see here the cuff following that same format and I do use the I'm gonna drop this thing I do use the light bulb stitch markers like a lot of people do but for me whether it's the leg or the foot I do not put a marker until 50 rounds because it's pointless for me to count 10 through 40 uh, because I know like it doesn't mean anything, but once I get to 50 and I can start putting them in, it is motivating to keep putting them in all the way up to, you know, 80 or 90 something. So uh, we are on 70, as you see by that green marker there, which means we are very close, very close indeed. Um, this doesn't really <laughs> do much for you, I don't think. Um, seeing the colors in the socks is probably a little bit better but that's how much yarn I have left. Okay, what else have I worked on? And by the way, I noticed uh, I said that I have a lot of works in progress, which is true, I do, and I'm only showing you what I've worked on. The other work in progress I have is down there and it fell on the floor, so I'll edit out me getting up and getting back down, but uh, yeah, I have to get it, just one sec. Okay, my next <laughs> work in progress I have made a lot of progress on. This is my souffle tea. There it is. So I can't remember how many inches I'm supposed to knit to, but I'm very close to how long they say to knit it to, and I'm gonna try it on again then. And um, I will probably add some length because that's what I normally do, but I will at least try it on because I think after that you still add like another inch. So this is mohair dyed by the lovely Anna of Zebra Yarns. And the top part of the souffle is one strand of mohair. And then it goes to the two strands and where you see that 
Hopefully you can see that pearl ridge. I can't see what you're seeing. So uh, the pearl ridge is where that ruffle will go. And I'm gonna make the body as long as I need it to be before I add, actually I'm gonna do the body, I'm gonna do the ruffle. I have to do the neck area. And then I will do the sleeves basically as long as I can. I have a pretty good bit of yarn left, but it's it's kind of hard to know what exactly you're looking at with mohair. Um, that's what I have left. But I feel like mohair is kind of deceiving. Like some of these look small, but I guarantee you, like that's probably still quite a lot of mohair. So that is my progress on that. Uh, it's been interesting with Sock Madness to try and work in other projects. I really enjoy Sock Madness, but um, like as soon as the pattern comes out, that has to be my main focus. And it's fun, but stressful. That being said, I don't know how much further I'm going to make it in the process. The next round, round four, I think 15 people advance. In round three, it was 23 people. I was the first to finish. The reason I was first to finish was because I happened to have last week off work. And so I was able to dedicate all my time. And even at that, those socks took me four like solid days. My Knit Companion app uh, records the time that you have a pattern open. It was 33 and a half hours for that pair of socks, which is a lot. Okay, what's next? Oh, I have two very similar whips. Uh, the first one being one that you've seen, but I have made progress. This is the share a pair style of sock that I'm doing with Kaya uh, of Sweden on Instagram. And we both picked out some, sorry about that, that was Cody. Of course it was Cody. Um, we picked out some Knit Picks yarns. I don't want to focus. And we're doing uh, the version like K, the Crazy Sock Lady, where you alternate every two rounds. And she has already finished her pair, so <laughs> good job. They look lovely. I cannot wait to have a matching pair. And the second one I just cast on yesterday. I have just a little progress. And these are actually the Mandy's Makings share a pair sets intended to be a share a pair, not necessarily this pattern, but I do like it. And the colorway name is Pop Cycle, Pop Cycle, Pop Cycle Paradise. It is this really pretty speckled green and this peachy pink. And I could not be happier with how these are coming out. So I'm actually doing the share a pair idea with uh, Joan, who is, I think, Mama Neven, Mama Nevin on Instagram. She kindly gifted that set to me, and we've been talking about when was a good time to start, and due to the color choices, we thought Easter would be a good day. So we cast those on together. I just realized I forgot to show you one of my works in progress. Uh, this here is my temperature sock for 2023. This is January 1st down here at the bottom all the way through March 31st. I have not included any of April yet. Um, but I was so happy to get that green in there. Also, I have started, hopefully you can see here, I have started the gusset increases. So that's exciting. Um, had done the calculation of how many days that is. I can't quite remember, but uh, anyway, this is through March 31st. It is making quite the interesting pattern. The one challenge to this pattern or project, whatever you want to call it, is all of the ends. There's the side where I'm joining and weaving in. There's definitely some chunky bits. It feels kind of hard. Only time will tell how those are going to wear or how they're going to feel on my feet, but. Um, I still am really enjoying the project, even if they're only for, I don't know, sort of a reflection, uh, something to compare to the next pair next year. Um, I think that'd be okay. I have plenty of hand knit socks. So if I can't wear those for some reason, it will not be the end of the world. All right, so that is everything that I have to show for finished objects and works in progress. The next thing I have to show you is a doozy. Um, I'm so excited. 
in case uh, you haven't been following along, haven't watched recently, I have been um, doing a personal challenge to spin for 100 days in a row. I think today's day 95, but I can never quite remember. But we're getting up there. We're almost done. And the project that I started out with was a three-ply combo spin, and it took quite a long time. I finished it around the 80, maybe maybe late 70s, early 80-day mark. It took quite some time, but I have finished it all. There are many skeins to show you, and they all look similar. They're definitely, uh, they're definitely related. And for this spin, I took three different braids and I divided them up and plied them all together. So these are the three that I have that are all uh, traditional three ply. Uh, this little remainder here was also traditional three ply. And then um, I had one braid that was mostly yellow, one braid that was mostly orange, and one braid that was like blues and greens. The orange braid ran out first, the yellow braid had the second least left, and the blue-green braid had the most. So I uh, made a cake out of the blue-ish yarns and plied the remaining yellow with what was there from the um, blues and got this beautiful skein. So this isn't quite a traditional three-ply, but it's still a three-ply. And I just love how this turned out. Um, I have all the yardages written down. Actually, let me see if I can pull that up. It's kind of interesting, I think. One second here. So, let's see here. In all, the traditional three-ply that I showed you, um, which was these three and this little tiny ball, that turned out to be 293 grams or 1,854 yards, which is a grist of 2,870 yards per pound. So I was hoping to get something that was a sport weight. Um, in reality, it's more of a light fingering, um, but I'm happy with it. I like it. I, I do wish it would have taken me less time if I would have spun it a little bit thicker. The yarn would have turned out a bit thicker, um, but it is what it is. And this um, leftover one was 49 grams or 128 yards and a grist of 1,185 yards per pound. So it's interesting that using the same yarns as were in the other spin that this had such a much lower yards per pound. I don't think that's right. I think it's supposed to be, sorry, I, I'm editing my page here. I think that's supposed to be 2,185 because that doesn't make sense otherwise. Yes, that's definitely right because before I washed it was 2,000, that still doesn't make sense. I'm going to have to redo my math because before I washed it, this had a grist of 2,740 yards per pound. So there's no way it um, shrunk that much. My math is just not good. So anyway, now um, I, I didn't really, I had a plan. I wanted to have a plan for that yarn when it was done. I would love to do the pressed flowers cardigan, which is just so pretty. And I did do a swatch. Actually, I guess the swatch goes this way. So I said it's a light fingering and the yarn, the white yarn that I used is a fingering, which I can't tell if you can tell, but it has glitter. I don't plan on doing a glitter cardigan. It's just not really, at least for this, it's not what I want, but it was what I had to swatch with because I, I, I'm pretty sure I want something light colored. As I was plying this and spinning it, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you. Um, it's kind of hard to know what would be a really good contrast color. Because as you can see, there are many different color combinations in there. And like kind of right in there, that's pretty light. Let's see if I can separate a few strands here that are lighter colored. So you see how some of those are, are pretty light in color. But anything should have contrast with the white. I guess I could be concerned about that strand there. 
is pretty light, but compared to white, I think it'll still stand out. And if there's a spot that really is not working, I could always cut it out because I have plenty of yardage. So, although I don't have any plans to cast this on like anytime soon, I really, really do want to knit this with this. Um, this pattern calls for, Cody, stop please. This pattern calls for sport weight. And um, I don't know if you can tell when I do that. I mean, obviously it looks kind of airy, but I did block this and uh, oversized cardigan isn't going to be stretched out. It's not like it's skin tight. And when it's not stretched out, I really feel like you can't see through it or anything. I did, um, my stitch gauge isn't quite correct. I know I took notes on that. Hold on a second. Cody, stop, please. Okay, so I can't remember what they call for in the pattern, but my stitch gauge was 29 stitches and 53 rows equals four inches. I think the pattern calls for 27 stitches and 34 rows. So obviously my row gauge is much more dense, but I don't think I'd want to go up the needle size. I think that would just open up the fabric too much. So, um, I, when I did the math, it turned out, I think I would knit a size two if I was using the correct gauge, but if I knit a size four, it should give me just a tad bit bigger than the size two. So it would give me a 43, uh, 43.45 inch bust. And that the pattern size I would choose is a 42. So the math should work out. The only concern I really have, it would be like the sleeve arm depth. I would have to knit more and then figure out how many stitches to pick up. And that would, could be difficult because it's in pattern. So I don't know, I'm not casting it on anytime too soon, but that is what I would like to knit with it. Now, it would be fantastic if another pattern similar that I really liked came out and it was for fingering weight, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I don't know, maybe I will swatch again and see if I can get a little bit better row gauge with still decent fabric on, you know, going up a size or something, but I will worry about that when I get closer to casting on. I still have all the yarn. I've already swatched everything for a bubble cardigan for Glenn. So maybe when things calm down, I would really like to get that cast on, but I need to finish some things first. Okay, that was a little tangent, sorry about that. Uh, the other thing I have worked on is I made, well, I cleaned um, three Shetland fleeces, but I just cleaned two of them the other day. Um, prior to that, I had already cleaned some and I ended up doing a swap with someone that I met online. She offered to send me four, um, four ounces of Cormo from her sheep on her farm and asked if I had anything to trade. And <laughs> Me being naive and not knowing what I was getting myself into, I told her I just washed a grayish Shetland fleece and offered to send her some of that. Well, me being the type of person I am, like I don't want to send something that isn't good and I don't really know a lot about processing fleece yet. I have a drum carter and I have a pair of Valkyrie, I think they're fine combs, but maybe they're super fine combs. Fuzz. Um, anyway, so I just got the combs and I started combing some, but this fleece had what they call sunburn tips and they were brittle and kind of matted down. So the tips had to be removed. They just weren't good. So I originally tried combing some of the fiber and it worked okay, but like I was just getting a ton of waste um, because of the tips. And then I decided to uh, use a dog brush to flick the tips off and that works, but um, you know, your hands take the damage because you just can't not hit your hand at some point with those little tines. And then I was doing drum carding. So um, again, wanting to send like a good product to this person, I offered to drum card four ounces of fiber for her. I had no clue that that would take me over 12 hours. It was very labor intensive. 
Um, that being said, I was quite happy with the finished product, product, especially considering I was really questioning the fleece. And I had four grams left from the bats that I was able to do a little sample with. So four grams, I spun long draw, and I have not washed this yet, um, but you can get the idea. And I spun four grams of a bat using um, continuous back, which is my, that's my normal. So there they are next to each other, the long draws on the left and the uh, continuous back is on the right. Because it's a bat, they, um, they are woolen spun, even using a worsted type drafting technique. So you see this is all worsted, which gives you a smooth yarn uh, versus even though this is a worsted spinning style, the yarn prep makes for a more airy woolen yarn. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so, like I said, I was really unsure about just the process, the fleece, the bats, but I'll be honest, this Shetland is so soft. I don't know if I've ever felt a softer yarn. I've never processed that much fleece to like actually spin, but I could see making a sweater out of this. Like it is just so soft. So awesome. I don't think I have enough weight to make enough for a sweater, but now that I've cleaned three of the Shetland fleeces, which I had three, they're all slightly different colors. I could see eventually doing something um, to make a colorwork sweater, I think would be really awesome. I'm really trying to get better at long draw. I'm gonna reach over there again. So I've been working on my long draw spinning, which I don't know. I don't know if it's a technique that a lot of people use, but as I explained, there's the worsted style, which looks more like your um, commercial yarns, or there's uh, woolen. <laughs> Sorry. It's so confusing. Why do they both have to start with W? Uh, there's woolen, which incorporates the air. So this isn't too exciting because it's all white, um, but these are both long draw polypay, which is a type of sheep from Longway Homestead. A couple years ago now, I signed up for a 12 month fiber subscription from Longway Homestead. I think they're out of Canada. And each month they sent me four ounces of a different type of, a uh, different breed of sheep. I have spun two of them. The first one I think was Tunis. I can't remember. And then this one's Polypay. Um, I am... Um, Pretty new to long draw. I have spun one other braid. That was the Tunis long draw. And I've spun this. And then I spun this little sample. I will say I do think it's getting easier. I think my yarns are getting slightly more um, consistent. It's hard to tell. And I've heard, I've heard that the plying is what kind of makes the consistency or it certainly adds the strength. Like you can see, um, that's a little curly cue from like a uh, thinner spot. And as the bobbin gets really full, you get a lot of those because it's not really pulling on to the, um, gosh, I can't think words. It's not pulling onto the bobbin very well. And I, I really, really packed these full. So um, I have these two and I have a third one on my wheel, but I just finished long draw spinning the singles yesterday. So I'm going to start plying these today after, after I record or after I edit, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll do it before. I'm not sure. Plying always takes me much longer than I expect it to. So, um, as I said, I have cleaned those three fleeces now. I didn't realize how long processing takes. I think that's something that a lot of people don't talk about. I am kind of an instant gratification person. I wish the process wasn't so long, but seeing the yarns that I can make after putting the time in, I just have to readjust my expectations, I think. I am enjoying it, and uh, as long as I don't want something done like today, then I, I'll probably do okay. All uh, right, I think that is about it. I don't have anything else on my notes. Um, like I said, life stuff has... Sorry, I keep kicking the thing. 
Life stuff has been crazy. I've just still been doing that class for work. I have attended three of the four sessions and I've written six of the eight total papers. I'm not kidding when I say it feels like more work than my master's degree. I really think it is. And I'm just pushing through. It's kind of weird because ultimately whatever grade I get doesn't matter. It's not like I'm getting a degree, but I, I'm just not that kind of person. Like I take everything seriously and I want to do good. I want to learn whatever is they're trying to teach me. And I do feel like I am learning a lot. It was nice to have the last week off. I spent the first couple days just really working on sack madness and um, very focused on that and trying to relax a little bit. But I, I did a lot of like house projects. I cleaned two fleeces. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I do appreciate y'all joining me and thank you so much for liking and subscribing. I always look forward to your comments and uh, I will talk to you all soon. Bye.